Hello, Diane here with a quick little video uh, to add on to the one we've done already on loading a quilt onto a loft frame. Uh, we have a handy quilter Moxie machine loaded on a loft frame set to low setting. Uh, often the instructions for setting up a machine are set to high, especially on the built app, but we've set ours to the low setting. We have a quilt sandwich on here put on in the traditional way where you lay your backing fabric down first face down and then you attach it to this cloth leader at the back here you pin on your backing to there I'll just quickly show you if you get it very new to all of this and you're just considering a long arm you attach your backing onto this cloth leader with some nice big long pins that we got with our machine um, they are fabulous, very good. Uh, there we go, if I can just sort of give you an some sort of idea of size there. Uh, they're marvellous and really nice and firm, um, which they need to be to hold your quilt sandwich onto there. And they also, because the length helps you get quite a good hold on almost an inch of fabric each time you grasp. So that's just as ordinary we're not making any suggestions for change with that one and then you roll it up till you're ready to stitch line then you put your wadding on the top of that and then your quilt top on the top of that and then you create a plumb line along the top to base them on so there's your sandwich on the frame good to go and then you've got your side clamps etc these springy dudes I haven't worn this on and then what they would ordinarily tell you to do is they would suggest that you um, pin your quilt sandwich you get the very other end of your quilt sandwich on the backing and you find the center of that bottom part of your backing and you uh, connect that to the center part of this cloth leader. That's all very well documented. That's not what this video is here to show you. This video is here to show you that you do not have to pin your sandwich onto that cloth leader. You don't need to touch your backing to that. What we use is we use these uh, clamps that are specially made for this loft frame. They are, yes, yeah, so they fit. They're the right dimensions for the loft frame for the poles here. And what you do is you get your tension right. Let me get that lined up. That's it. So just make sure you've got no baggy, saggy bits there. And all you have to do is put the clamp on one, down at one end over the pole. Hopefully you can see that there. And that goes down like so and instantly you can see that coming up and if you need them you can add these uh, extra ones onto the end which literally have got a nice handle and just to pull them up at an angle like that and then you get your tension right so this isn't baggy saggy you get your clamp on the side clamps to hold the backing and the wadding You've got one on either side to again create that get that tension working not too tight not rock hard needs to have a bit of bounce in it as such to enable to get your stitches correct and there you go it's that quick whereas the pinning if you've had a go you'll know it takes so much longer so that's basically enough perhaps need to say when you bring your sandwich over it just goes straight over the backing pole and it comes in between the front and the backing pole so it's in there it's nice and out of the way we've also got uh, a net on ours so it won't get caught in your feet so I might have to lower that a little bit so you can see there you go there it's sitting in the net so it's not even going to get in the way of my feet as I walk along and I'm doing my quilting so yeah we love them and we can highly recommend them for uh, loading your quilts onto a 
quilt frame, such as the loft frame, because they are made for other frames as well. You just have to make sure that you get the right size and don't just get one long one. Get yourself a couple of smaller ones as well, because often your quilts are much wider than just one. Okay. Happy quilting!